Hello and welcome to the Slackware Arm vlog. This vlog is principally about the development of Slackware Linux on the Arm platform. And if you like what we're doing here, um, please consider becoming a patron. You can do that by going to the URL here, arm.slackware.com forward slash sponsor. And your donations to the project essentially help keep the maintenance of the project going. So it helps buy new hardware, replace broken hardware, pay for the electricity to host the hardware and various other things. So if you like what we're doing here, then please consider becoming one. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Slackware ARCH64, that's the ARM64 version of Slackware, inside of Parallels, which is a hypervisor. So this is running on an Apple MacBook Pro M2, so it's Apple Silicon. And we're going to be installing it inside of Parallels, which is a hypervisor. The version that we've tested here is version 20.2.2. Now, Parallels is a commercial product. It is not free. There is a trial license, which is what I'm using here. So to begin, into the search engine, type ARM Slackware. And it's usually the first hit. It's arm.slackware.com. Next, click on the installation guides on the left hand side. At the moment, at the time of creating this video, which is April 2025, there isn't a stable release of the ARCH64 port. So we're going to use the development branch, which is called current. So click on that. There is a list of actively maintained supported hardware models here. And you want to click on the Apple Silicon Parallels documentation here in the table. If you don't have Parallels, but you would like to try out Slackware ARCH64 virtualized on your Mac, there are another two options, which is using UTM, which is a free open source product, which works great because I've, I'll show you in future videos. I've actually been developing Slackware ARCH64 for the last week or two inside of a VM running inside of the UTM hypervisor. It's stable, it's really fast, works great. So if you don't want to buy Parallels and you don't currently have it, I would strongly suggest that you use UTM. We also support VMware Fusion, which is a commercial product, but it is free for open source and it's also really good. So there are these two options that you can use for free here. But again, if you already have Parallels, then this is how you can install it. So click on the install instructions and you can walk through these. It's pretty straightforward, it's easy to follow. So the first thing that you need to do is open up a terminal application. I'm going to be using Ghost TTY here, but you can see here, you could also use the standard Mac terminal application, but I prefer Ghost TTY, so I'm going to use that. Now at this point, you simply follow the instructions. So if I type mkdir slackware, cd slackware, I simply copy this into here, like this. Copy these lines here, like that. I've just downloaded the GPG signature and the MD5 sum of the ISO. And now I'm going to download the ISO. So let's paste that in like that. So that's going to take about 15 minutes to download. Okay, so the ISO has downloaded. The next thing we need to do is to verify it. Now, ideally, you would verify the ISO by comparing the digital signature with GPG. However, MacOS does not include GPG by default and I don't have it installed either. So, you could either install GPG into MacOS or perhaps you could download this ISO onto a Linux box and verify it there. Now, for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to verify the ISO's hash, which only proves that the ISO hasn't been corrupted during the download process. It doesn't verify the authenticity of the ISO. So I do recommend that you verify it with GPG. So what we do here is we just copy this line like this and paste it into the shell. And then we 
manually verify that the hashes are identical. Now the hashes in the documentation are examples, so you can see what we've downloaded here is different. Now you simply compare the two hashes, so this one against this one, and you can see visually that they are identical. So this simply proves that the download is in good shape, it hasn't been corrupted during the download process. So let's now begin configuring our VM and setting it up. First thing is we click on other options. Next we click on install Windows Linux or Mac OS and click continue. Next we grab the ISO that we've downloaded into our Slackware directory and just drag it onto the icon. Then we click on continue. From the menu we click on other Linux. Click OK. Give it a name, Slackware a arch 64 click on customize settings before installation click on create so now we'll just make a few tweaks to the configuration options so first click on hardware now for the cpu and memory you can adjust it if you wish i haven't it works fine as it is three gigs is more than sufficient for slackware if you're going to be doing any heavy lifting in it such as compiling packages or so on you probably want to increase this to at least six gigs but I'm not going to be doing that with this one, so I'll leave it as the defaults. Click on Network. Now, in the documentation, you'll see that I've selected to use the default adapter. On my machine here, I found that the DNS doesn't work. The networking does work. I do have internet or network access, but the DNS server provided by Parallels doesn't work. Now, it could be because I have a remote access client on my uh, machine here which is potentially causing this to fail. I also have the same issue inside of UTM but in VMware Fusion it works fine so I don't know but what I've done here is select default adapter which in other hypervisors is called bridged mode so this VM essentially appears as a machine on my physical network. The Slackware installer does not require network access so again, you can leave this as a default and you can change it post installation if you wish. But for now, I'm going to configure it into bridge mode. Next, we set up the hard disk. So click on advanced, click on properties. Now, by default, the allocation is 64 gigs for your storage. If that's OK with you, leave it like that. I'm going to set it to 35, though. It's recommended for Slackware that you perform a full installation because it takes care of all of the dependencies. And the full footprint of a Slackware installation is approximately 25 gigabytes. So setting it to 35 gigs gives you about 10 gigs to play with on the file system. If you know in advance that you'll need more than that, then obviously increase the storage as you need. Okay, closed. Click OK. Then click on CD DVD, click on choose an image file, and then click on the ISO that you downloaded earlier. OK. Close the window, then click continue. Now you'll see that these pop up here asking for permission to the microphone and various other things. You don't need to do that. You can if you wish, but I'm not going to. Okay, so press enter on install Slackware. The installer is now going to boot. Now, before we begin, I'm gonna time how long it takes to install Slackware ARCH64. Let's click play here. Okay. So set yourself a key map. I'm going to pick the UK map. I'm going to move through this pretty quickly, but you can follow along on the installation instructions at your own pace. fdisk slash dev slash sda g n 100m type type uefi n 2 plus 4g type to swap and mm, mm. right okay so i've created my disk partitions 100 megs for the efi partition four gigs for swap and then i've allocated the balance of the storage which is 30 gigs to the root file system so that's where your data and the os will be stored next type setup scroll down to add swap press ok press ok press no 
Okay, press enter, format, we'll use X4. You can pick a different file system if you wish. Okay, say yes, we have an EFI partition. Great, yes. And then we'll press enter to install a full Slackware. And there we are. If you are short of something to do whilst the package is installed, you can press the Alt and right arrow key or left arrow key like this to cycle through the virtual consoles within the installer. And if you press enter on one of them, type in brick tick and you can play a little game, press space to start, press L to launch. And it's one of these breakout games like Arkanoid you may have played on an Atari ST in the uh, 90s, 80s, oh, like that. And the object of the game is to clear all of the blocks above and you can collect the power ups or power downs. This one's a power down because it's slower. To check the progress of the installation, you simply press the right and left arrow keys to flick between the virtual consoles like that to check the progress of the installation. We're currently up to three minutes, 52 seconds. We're almost complete now. Okay, we're now in the post-installation phase. All the packages have installed. Okay, we'll configure this. So select USB connected mouse. Yes, we'll load the mouse driver. We'll configure the network. We'll call it um, Apple Parallels, arm.slackware.com. Don't need a VLAN ID. We use Network Manager. Yes, it's correct. If you want to use NFS, which I always do, scroll down, select NFS. You can pick any of these services to start at runtime. You can also configure these to start once the OS has been installed as well. And that's explained in the install guide. Press OK. Yes, we'll pick some screen fonts. We'll use TER122B. That's the one we're using right now in the installer. I'll set my local time zone to London, and then we'll use KDE. Set ourselves a root password. Okay, and then exit the menu, press enter on reboot. And now the VM will reboot into the OS. Okay, so there we go. You can press enter or let it time out. There we go. So just over 10 minutes, and that does include me talking, we have booted the Slackware installer, partitioned the storage, installed a full installation of Slackware, run through the post-installation phase, and we booted to a login prompt. 11 minutes and five seconds. Okay, so let's scroll down to the end of the documentation here. And the first thing we need to do is to log in as root using the password that you have just configured at the end of the post installation phase. Okay, the next thing you want to do is to add yourself a non root user. So I'll add myself one with my usual username. You can fill in your details here. Da -da -da -da. Set yourself your password. Okay. Now, before we start X and open the graphical environment, I would like to update the operating system because there are some new packages. So let's just open that here. And we're going to use Slack package or Slack PKG, however you want to pronounce it. So let's just configure that now. So first of all, we open up this Slack package mirrors, jump to the end, and I will use the Slackware UK mirror. You can pick one of the other ones there if you wish. Save the file. Next, Slack package update GPG. Like that. Yes, it is. Okay. And then update like that. 
Okay, so we can now see the change log because sometimes there are important notices placed in the change log that you may need to take notice of. And so I do always recommend reviewing the change log before you install the packages. Okay, so now we'll see if there are any new packages to install that are brand new that have just been added to the operating system. In this case, I don't think that there are, no, there aren't. Okay, so now let's upgrade the packages. We do know there are some updates, so let's do that. Here we go, we've got a list of packages that have been updated since the ISO was released. So we'll just download and install those, okay? For configuration files, they are packaged with a .new suffix. So that enables you to modify the system config files and when the packages are updated, we won't automatically overwrite to your manually edited file. What this is showing you here is saying, hey, basically we've, we've detected some new versions of those config files. What would you like to do with it? If you know that you have changed these files, then you may want to perform a diff between the version you edited and the new version that's packaged and then merge the differences in. In this instance, because this is a brand new installation, I can just overwrite the existing files with the new ones like that. Next, we'll use the clean system command to clean up. So the system's now been updated and we can again press Alt and the right arrow key or left arrow key, switch to another virtual console, log in with your Pleb account and run X. And KDE will load because that's what we selected in the post installation phase. You can always change that uh, later on. So you can see we can automatically resize. That all works. We'll load up Firefox and hit our YouTube channel. Here we are. Here's the videos for the other virtualization platforms. So you can hear we, we have sound. There we go. And there we go, that's how it's done. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and thanks again for your support. If you like what we're doing here, feel free to become a patron, it is appreciated. I love doing what I'm doing here and uh, you guys help make that happen. So take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.